Hey guys, how are you all doing? It's been a while but I'm back with another cool photo manipulation. It's like an 80s action thriller where an ace detective tracks down an underworld boss. You might also get a lot of Blade Runner vibes in it. This time lapse will be a lot slower than usual and easier for you to follow as the photo manipulation was fairly quick but fun to do at the same time. So be sure to stick till the end as you might find some cool tips and tricks. Alright then, let's dive into it and let's create. I started by placing our subject around the right one-third position of the canvas. This stock image is from photomanipulation.com and I did this composition for their power pose challenge. Next, for the backdrop, I dropped some crunchy alleyways filled with neon lights from unsplash.com. You can use these types of backdrops for cyberpunk, apocalyptic and many other genres. For mixing different images, I just used the polygonal lasso tool to cut out the buildings around the edges. With so many cables and bars sticking out, it will blend automatically. I just needed to make sure the perspective and the color tones were in sync. Next I added a cool dot challenger to fill the left half of the scene and use the object selection tool to quickly extract it out. I felt black instead of blue would look more badass. For that, I clipped a hue saturation adjustment layer to the car and clicked on the hue picker to sample the blue color that I needed to change. Then I simply desaturated that selected channel to remove the blue color. On top of that, I clipped a curves adjustment layer and darkened it up to match with the overall scene. I moved the elements around a bit and added a cat looking up at the detective on the bottom right pavement. I used Photoshop's subject selection to create a quick overall selection, then used the quick selection tool to refine the edges. The position of the car looked very odd and I had to fix it. I used the lasso tool to cut out the sections of the car that needed to match with the perspective. I took the car out onto a new layer and used the free transform to distort it and get an approximate match with the perspective. To fix the gaps between the cutouts, I painted with a soft round brush sampling colors from the car. Further fine tuned areas like smoothing the shadow, fading the window panes, and fixing the road texture. Then I dropped a rainy, wet street image and used a crunchy brush to mask and show areas. It would create a nice wet look on the street and complement the scene when we add the rain effects. Now it's time to work on the environment. I went for a dense foggy atmosphere. I took a cloud brush and added thick layers of smoke in between the background, mid-ground and foreground layers. It would not only add the atmospheric perspective and depth but will also help nicely separate the subject from the busy backdrop. For the color grading, I went with a red, yellow-green cinematic color grade. I added a color balance adjustment layer and tweaked the sliders to get the tones I was looking for. On the right, I needed it to be red, as I added a red neon.
neon sign afterward. For shifting the pulse, I used the hue saturation adjustment player, went into the science channel and changed the hue to red. Then I used rear mask to show in required areas. To simplify the colors on the neon signs, I needed to knock off the extra blues and greens in the scene. For that, I added a selective color adjustment layer and tweaked the sliders in various channels accordingly. To create the neon sign, I at first filled the area with a dark gray color, then used a nice neon font to write the devil's den. Then I grouped all the texts together and went into the blending options and added some layer styles to create the glow effect. For the glow, I mostly added multiple drop shadows in yellow or red-orange color and kept the blending mode to linear light. For the glow on the car tail lights, I took two layers, filled them with black and changed the blending mode of one of them to linear dodge and the other to color dodge. Then used dark red color to add the glow. The two layers in linear dodge and color dodge blending modes will help intensify the effect. I clipped an additional curves on the car and dropped the top right node in the RGB channel to reduce the strong highlights. Next I moved on to color grading our subject. I clipped the curves and dropped the top right node to darken him up, but in the layer mask I painted with black on the areas that will get some light. Next, I clipped on other curves and tweaked the channels to get a strong red color cast. I filled the layer mask with black and painted with white along the areas of the highlights. For the rim lights, I clipped a blank layer, filled it with black, set its blending mode to linear dodge and painted with the color of the light in the required areas. Added some cast shadows in a layer set to multiply blending mode to make our subject look planted on the ground. I did the same treatment with the cat. For some of the smoke in the backdrop, I added a blue color cast with curves. It will help add a touch of variety and also separate the background better. On top of everything, I added a blank layer in soft light blending mode and painted the ambient light and color on it. I created another layer in soft light blending mode on top of it and used it for the bloom effects. I painted lightly with the color of the light around the light sources and on objects where I think the light is likely to bounce off. I 
I added some extra details to the scene like the sparks, some details on the distant buildings and painting some overhanging cables. Here I selected the highlights in the scene using the color range and used the selection as a mask to a curves where I dropped the whites to a pale yellow color. I wanted to create a dark gloomy atmosphere and I felt this was fitting. Finally I started creating the rain effects. I dropped two rain textures and changed their blending mode to color dodge. I find color dodge to work best in these types of night scenes where the raindrops react nicely to the lights. After that I moved on to the most time consuming part of rainy scenes, creating the drops and water drips. I used some custom brushes to add the splatters on different objects and also manually painted some water that runs down the surfaces. I'll let this run as we head over to our final image reveal where I modified the color grading a little bit and added some finer details here and there. I hope you like this artwork and got some tips out of it. If so, be sure to like the video and share it with your friends. And if you like my overall content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel that will greatly motivate me to create more videos like this. Well then, I will see you in the next video. Until then, enjoy creating.